Okay, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Publisher V2 and in this tutorial I'm going to talk you through all of the different tools that we have available over here on the left hand side toolbar menu. So this tutorial is aimed at complete beginners that may have never used Affinity Publisher before and would like a general idea how this works. So moving on with this tutorial, the first tool that we are going to talk about is going to be the move tool that can be found on the top left hand side. So the move tool is used to select objects and move them around and resize them. If you would like to resize your objects, all you have to do is select any of these round nodes surrounding your elements and begin dragging it in or out to make it bigger or smaller. You can also rotate any of your elements by using this single node at the top of your object and moving it to the right or the left. You can also hold down your shift key while rotating your object and that will automatically snap to a 15 degree increment. Also, if you hold down the shift key on your keyboard while dragging your object, it will keep it locked in a straight line. And the shift key can also be used while changing the size of your object to lock your original proportions as you resize just to make sure that your design stays perfect as you resize that. If you would like to make a duplicated copy of your object, then all you have to do is hold down command or control while dragging away from your original object. Then you will make a duplicated copy. As you can see over here on the layers, we now have two of the same objects available. And you can see that we can freely move these elements around using our mouse. However, if you want to get really precise with your positions, then you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move them one pixel at a time. Or holding down shift while using your arrow keys will move your objects 10 pixels at a time. And you may have noticed that I also have snapping enabled, which in most cases will make it a lot easier to make sure that all of your objects align with each other. However, if you find that you want to move your objects around freely without snapping, then all you have to do is turn snapping off up here on the top menu bar with a magnet tool. And you may also have noticed the numbers that appear next to your object, which will tell you the distance between each element. And this can be really useful when being precise with your positioning. So that is everything that you need to know about the move tool. And now we'll move on using the node tool. So what the node tool is used for is to manipulate your shape or text to make that look a little bit more unique. And the way that we would do that is by selecting our object. Then we need to come up to the top menu bar to where it says convert to curves. Then once we've done that, we can go ahead and select our node tool. And you can see that we have all of these nodes appear around the object. And we can select any of these nodes and start moving these around however you like. We also have the option to change between a sharp curve or a smooth curve using these icons on the top left hand context menu bar. And the same principle applies to the text. First of all, select your text. Then we need to head up to the top menu bar and convert that to curves. Then once again, select the node tool and now we can start moving individual nodes to make our design that a little bit more unique. So that right there is a quick overview of the node tool and now we'll move on to the frame text tool. So what the frame text tool is used for is mainly large paragraphs of text. And the way that we would use this is by simply dragging out a text box to any size that you would like. And then once we've done that, you can see we have our cursor blinking inside of this box. And now we can start adding some content. And just to be quick with this tutorial, I'm not going to write out any text. I'm just going to right click on my mouse and select this option right here that says insert filler text. This is going to be a load of nonsense that you can't really read as it's only really used as a placeholder. If you want to adjust the size of your text or maybe change your font, you can do so up here inside of the context toolbar menu. And if you find that you don't have enough space inside of your text box to fit all of your text, then all we got to do is resize the text box using the nodes and just drag that out to be any size that you would like. You can also increase the size of the text box and text frame at the same time by selecting the node just down here on the bottom right hand corner and moving that in and out to make that bigger or smaller. Then just up here on the top context menu bar, you will find all of the normal tools that you would find inside of any word processing application. As well as over here on the right hand side, you have the option to change the paragraph and character settings. If you want to get really precise with your text formatting, 
So moving on, we'll now talk about the table tool and how that one works. So once you select the table tool, all you have to do is start dragging across your canvas with your mouse. And you can see that when I start to drag it over to the right hand side, our table starts adding additional columns. And if I start to drag that down with the mouse, you can see that it also adds additional rows. And we can either drag our mouse up or down to remove or add rows and the same principle with the columns. We can even move to the left or the right to add or remove additional columns. Then once we created our table, you can see that it's made up of all these individual cells, which we can go ahead and start adding content to by selecting any of these and typing anything that you would like inside of there. And you can always come back at any point and add additional rows or columns if you would like. All you got to do is select that table and drag once again to the left or to the right to add or remove columns or up and down to remove or add rows. So I do plan on making a tutorial solely based on the table tool as you can get some really creative effects with this. And there are so many different options that you can use in terms of maybe removing borders, adding colors to individual cells and having some of your columns bigger than the others. And for me to cover that in this tutorial will make this video go on for far too long. So I'll just leave this as a quick overview of the table tool and I'll go ahead and make that separate tutorial on using the table tool and all of its features in a future tutorial. So next we have the artistic text tool, which is mainly used for creating headers or small amounts of text. Whereas if you want to use paragraphs, then you are best off using the frame text tool. And the way we use the artistic text tool is by simply dragging this out to any size that you would like and start typing anything inside of here that you would like to use inside of your design. And just like before, we have all of the same options on the top context menu bar where we can change the size of the font and formatting as well as have access to those character and paragraph settings over on the right hand side. And as for the character and paragraph settings, they will also need their own tutorial to talk you through all of the different settings inside of there. So once again, I'll try and cover that one in another future tutorial. So next we have the pen tool and the pen tool is one of those tools that a lot of people get a little bit overwhelmed by and a bit confused of how to use it correctly. And it definitely needs its own tutorial to explain this in full detail. And I have actually created a tutorial based on the pen tool and how that works. However, that was created using Affinity Designer, but the pen tool is used exactly the same way in Affinity Publisher or Affinity Photo. So go ahead and check out that tutorial if you want to learn a little bit more about the pen tool. However, just a quick demonstration on how you may use this inside of Affinity Publisher is just by creating straight lines. And the way that we would do that is just by simply tapping anywhere on your canvas to create a node. And then if we hold down shift and move our mouse over to another position, then that will keep that perfectly straight when we go ahead and create our line. Alternatively, if you don't want that to be perfectly straight, then all you gotta do is let go of shift. And if we pay attention over to the right hand side of our colors menu, you can see that we don't have a fill on our pen tool. We actually use a stroke, which at the moment has a default color of black. So we can go ahead and change that to be any color that we would like. Then we just need to adjust the stroke settings to make that a little bit thicker or thinner. And the way that we can do this is inside of the context menu bar on the top left hand side, where you have the option to change the width. Then we can also go ahead and select our move tool and start moving our line around our canvas and position that to any way you may want to put it. So once again, that is just a quick overview of the pen tool to create straight lines. However, I do have another tutorial teaching you how you can use this more creatively, which I will link in the top right hand corner now. So next we have our shape building tools where we can go ahead and select any kind of shape that we would like to use in your design. And depending on the shape that you choose, you are going to have some additional options up here inside of the context menu bar where you can change things such as the points of the shape as well as the inner radius or outer circle, etc., to try and manipulate that to be any kind of shape that you are going for. Then when you've created your shape and you're happy with it, you can go ahead and grab your move tool and position and resize that anywhere that you would like. You can also make your way over to the right hand side to your colors menu and give that a fill color and maybe a stroke applied. Keeping in mind that you can also change the size of the stroke inside of your stroke menu over on the top left hand side. 
So moving on in here, we have two more tools which are basically the same tool. These are called the picture frame tools and one of them is a circle and the other one is going to be a rectangle. And the way that this works is just by simply dragging this out onto our canvas to make the size that you would like. And then we can simply import an image into these so they act as a clipping mask, keeping your images to the exact shapes that you have created. And just as a quick demonstration, I'm going to drag an image from the stock library and just drop that on top of our picture frame so you can see how this works. And you can also see that we have a couple of options here where we can move the image around inside of the picture frame tool as well as zoom in and out. So if you want to bring your own image into your picture frame tool, then all you've got to do is select the frame that you just created and make your way over to the left hand side and select this option right here that says place image. That then will take you to your hard drive where you can import any images. So underneath that we have the place image tool, which as mentioned in the picture frame tool is just a way to navigate to your hard drive and import any images that you want to use inside of your design. Okay, so next we have the data merge tool and this tool is one of those intermediate tools that I don't really recommend that you focus too much on as a beginner as there is quite a lot to cover and this is mainly used for Google or Excel sheets using CSV files. And I will cover all of this in a future tutorial. However, I will go ahead and just skip this one for now as the idea of this tutorial is just to keep it beginner friendly. So moving on, we have the vector crop tool, which is kind of self-explanatory. It's just used to crop your image and cut off areas that you don't want to use inside of your project. Then underneath that, we have our fill tool, which we can use to create gradients on our shapes or our text. And the way that we would do that is by simply dragging from the top to the bottom or the left or the right and apply a color to both of these individual nodes. We also have the option to move the slider in the middle where we can adjust one color to be more than the other or we can apply additional nodes anywhere along this line just by double clicking and adding more colors. Then next we have the transparency tool which is basically the same thing as the fill tool. The only difference being is that one side of this is going to be transparent. So if we go ahead and we select a shape and apply the transparency tool, you will see that we have one color on one side whereas the other color remains transparent and see-through. Then next we have our color picker tool which is used to sample any color that we may have inside of our document that you may want to replicate for different objects. Just simply drag your color picker tool over any other objects that you would like to sample the color from. And then once you head over to the right hand side, you can see that we now have that color available. And we can go ahead and just choose that and apply that to anything that you would like. Then underneath that one, we have the view tool. And this is mainly used to move around your canvas just by holding down on your mouse and dragging around your canvas. Or alternatively, if you are using any other tool, if you hold down spacebar on your keyboard, then that will act as a shortcut for the view tool. Then underneath that, we have our zoom tool where we can zoom in and out of our document. And we can adjust that at the top here in the context menu bar where we have the option to change the zoom size with a percentage, or we can do it manually with the slider and also change the units of the zoom. So there is an overview of the tools inside of Affinity Publisher and hopefully now you have a general idea of how all of these work. I know I didn't get a chance to cover the pen tool in its full potential in this video as well as a data merge tool. However, they really do require a little bit more time to go through all of those settings. So I will make individual tutorials for them in the future. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new and I will see you in the next one.